Hi, I'm Mark Alfonso from PLC Calibration. We provide service and calibration for the Aeroflex 4000 and 6000 series DME ramp test sets. So today I'm going to be talking about the IFR 4000, how to run the self-test diagnostic, as well as some other tips and tricks so that you can, uh, for your use. Okay, so a few things that I want to show you on the IFR 4000 are how to actually check to see what options are installed. So if I go into the setup menu and then you go under info here, you can actually see that you've got your software version, okay, which is upgradable through the either the 15 or the 25 pin port that's on the top. And also the, the option for the ELT is installed. So that's your 1215, 243, 406 ELT. Some of the common things you're gonna do with the IFR 4000 is navigate the menus and then you can press the mode button in order to do that. All right, but what we want to do right now is actually do a self-test diagnostic and that's gonna basically tell us the health of the unit. So I press setup down here and you can actually see how the setup is done. And there's a, a one called hardware tools. So we go into hardware tools and then under diagnostics, okay and it'll actually give us the RF block temperature and the ambient temperature of the unit. And we're gonna run a self-test right now, so I'm gonna press the self-test key, and with everything disconnected, which it is right now, I'm gonna hit run. We're gonna see if there's any uh, ones that might cause a problem to us. So things again that we're looking for is the NVRAM, and then anything on the RF block, like the lock detect, level detect, SWR, frequency counter, localizer, markers, uh, power detect and antenna protection. So we want to check all of those as well and that's all on the RF block itself. Okay? And you can see that they're all almost finished here. Other uh, things that you should know about on the self-test is when you start up, if you start up the unit too quickly and you go right into the self-test, it'll say it hasn't warmed up. So you just need to wait 30 seconds and then you can run the self-test again. Just make sure you have all the connectors unplugged. Now one thing to note, and it says right on the back of the unit here, is the antenna port. It actually tells you how much power you can put in max for the different units on the back here. So SWR, you should never be putting RF power into SWR. That's only for checking antenna connections and cables right, for an SWR sweep. Auxiliary IO TTL in, you're not putting RF into there. RF IO, that's where you can do the 30 watts max, as it says here. And then this is, you have to be really careful with the antenna connector not to plug that into anything directly on your aircraft because that could cause failures inside the unit because it's uh, overpowering it. So hence, uh, most likely what happened with this unit here with the Marker 2 failure is that someone had plugged into the antenna port and overdrove the power into that. So some other tips and tricks that I can show you on the unit. You just hit return a few times. You can get your info on the unit, which we talked about, and self-guided test. This is kind of a neat thing if you're wanting to learn how to set up different um, connections. So it'll actually sh it'll guide you through. Um, one of the ones that a lot of people ask for is, if I hit return here, the mode button here, so you press mode, and it actually goes through all the different modes, localizer, glide slope, marker beacon, but sometimes people go too far and they want to go back. So instead of having to go through all of the menus again, it's really simple. If you want to just go back to 121.5 for two, four, three. All you do is instead of pressing the mode button all the way back, just press the up arrow and that'll actually take you back. So you can actually use the up and the down arrow to navigate the menu as well. Another one that uh, people use is the backlight. So you can actually turn the backlight on and off as such and the contrast, okay? So if you, it's hard to view the unit for some reason in your area, you just, uh, you can play with those two as well. And one of the last things on your setup menu here, just make sure that the port is set to cor correctly. So whether it's RF, IO, or antenna, your frequencies are correct. And you can, like I said, you can always do the guided self-test and, and learn more.